Welcome and greetings from Bonnie Downs Baptist Church in East Ham. We're in East London. We're honoured to guide you in a 30 minute pause to dwell in God's word together. When lockdown hit in March last year, our activist shaped community felt we needed to lean in to more tried and tested spiritual practices. We needed to be resilient. We wanted to listen to what God was saying to us. So we started daily morning offices from this chair, live in our community at 8 a.m. every weekday. Over a year later, we still do this. We use three practices. We use centering prayer, prayers of examine, and a Lexio Divina approach that we think of as dwelling in the word. So we're going to guide you through a short pause now and invite you to listen to Jesus, the word of God, with us. We're going to make space intentionally to be still in his presence. So let me invite you to centering prayer with me. We're just going to do this for a few minutes. So begin by sitting somewhere that you can be fairly alert and comfortable. We like to sit in a centred posture. And it might be helpful to close your eyes. Take a big deep breath in with me, a really filling breath. And a long, slow exhale. This is a signal to our body to be still. Do it again. Slow exhale. Feel yourself breathing yourself down. Out of your thinking. In through yourself. Feeling the earth beneath you, under your feet, being centred, being still. Breathe with me again, big deep breath in. And a slow exhale. For a few minutes, we're going to not resist or resent thoughts that cross our minds. But we're going to gently drop them, allowing stillness. If you find thoughts are disturbing you, just return to your own breathing or to a prayer words like the name of Jesus. So let's be still together. We'll do three minutes of silence and centering.
Our intention is to be still. Christian centering prayer is not to achieve emptiness, but stillness. As thoughts come, just let them drop. Return to your breathing or to a prayer word. Your very posture of stillness is a prayer. Take a deep breath. We're going to dwell in God's word together. So we invite you to use your imagination as we read four short verses from the Bible passage that the brilliant Shane Claiborne shared from yesterday, and the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10. We will focus in on the picture of godly compassion. And so as I read the four verses, let your imagination guide you. And picture Jesus telling you this story being there in the original crowd. Enter the story itself. What do you see? What do you feel? Where are you in that story? Where are you standing? What character do you relate to? So I'll read the four verses really slowly and it will give you space to dwell in the story. So you may want to close your eyes you may want to stay in that really comfortable stance that Sally's just led us in. You may want to make some notes in a journal. But just listen as I um, speak the four verses and picture Jesus um, telling this story. So we'll read from Luke 10, 33 to 36. Then a despised Samaritan came along. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. So take some time now to think about how this story captures your imagination. The scripture will be in the comments box for you to reflect as well. So we're going to spend some time now allowing ourselves to be in the story.
Now for the second reading, we ask Jesus, the Word of God, to show us something fresh in this passage. As I read, allow yourselves to be caught by one of the words, phrases, or images, and dwell there. Think about it and take some time to ponder on it. We read, Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Crossing over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wombs with olive oil and wine and bandaged him. Then they put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he gave the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If this bill runs higher than this, then I'll pay you the next time I am here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to this man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. If you're alive with us, feel free to add a phrase which shines out at you today in the live comments. third and final reading and an opportunity to hear a call to act before i read the same four verses let's pause and commit to be a doer of the word Hearing God's voice is rarely an audible thing. It's often more like a pull or an intrigue. As I read, perhaps there's a pull in your mind to something that you actually should do. It might be that you hear this for yourself personally for your community in a day that will be full of voices we give time to dwell in the word and be ready for a direct personal call from jesus so i'll read again then a despised samaritan came along and when he saw the man he felt compassion for him going over to him the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn he took care of him. The next day, 
he handed the innkeeper two silver coins telling him take care of this man if his bill runs higher than this I'll pay you the next time I'm here now which of these three would you say was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by bandits Jesus asked Take a moment of quiet. The words are in the comments. Do any of them call you to act? Close your eyes. Leave some space. Jesus, what do you want to say to me? What do you want me to do? feel there has been some direct call it can be helpful to write that either in a journal or on the live comments here it's not always appropriate we're going to use the final movement of the exam in prayer to help us really reach in and dwelling this word together This story is very challenging. Shane gave us quite a challenge yesterday. What do you need from God in order to live authentic, godly compassion in the way this story describes? Could be something very specific about the call to act that you heard today. What do you need from God in order to be able to be a doer of this word? It may be that you need to mature in one of the spiritual fruit. Do you need more patience or kindness? It could be that you have to actually call somebody today or cross the street. What do you need from God to be able to do it? Let's be quiet again. Use a place of stillness. And ask God to give us what we need. To be able to be doers of this word. Breathe in deeply with me. And a long, slow exhale. Signal to your body to be still. Breathe in again. Breathe yourself down from anxiety. On the next big breath in, think of filling up with the gift of God that's for you today, the thing that you need to live your authentic, true self. 
could be one word. What does God want to give you to be a doer of this word? Think of the word and breathe it in. Do that again. Are you noticing any barriers? Ask Jesus to come in to fill you, breathing God's presence. One more minute of stillness. deep breath. Thank you so much for allowing us to create a pause during the Baptist Assembly. It does feel strange to be invited in and to sit in my chair with my eyes shut and share quietness with you. But we're an East End working class activist community and we would not have made it through lockdown without leaning in to contemplative practices. And it's become a regular part of our daily office as a church. Around half of our church now join us at 8 a.m. on Facebook Live to do one of these three practices every day. On Sunday, we're going to be writing some of our own liturgy to help us with centering prayer and with responding to short passages of God's word. We'd love to hear how your community have been using contemplative practices over lockdown. We want to be contemplative activists. So thank you for sharing a bit of time with us on our red chair at Bonnie Downs. Our community was so encouraged by Shane Claiborne that we became part of Red Letter Christians UK and find real encouragement and support to be contemplative activists through that network of like-minded people. So you can follow the Red Letter Christians website if you'd like to know more about what that meant for us. When we read Shane's Beating Knives, uh, Beating Guns book, we decided to ask our council if we could have the seized weapons that had been taken from the streets of Newham, and we created a knife sculpture as a prophetic act to stand against violence in Newham. We also raised money for a weapon amnesty bin. And we've used liturgy and contemplative practices to help us to have the resilience and energy 
to be God's people in our community. We'd love to hear how this is working out for you. Thanks for joining us this morning.